Hello, my name is Dr. Jack Milo. I'm professor and chair of urologic surgery at Temple University Hospital here in Philadelphia. And we're here today to talk a few minutes about erectile dysfunction. Naturally, all medical conditions should be discussed privately with your healthcare provider. We are just discussing a few suggestions, and these are um, going to be the footsteps for you to take to your provider uh, for expound on further detail how it can help you. So the first question is you want to ask, what do you want to achieve? Better erection, better sex drive, uh, better sexual gratification, closer intimate relationships. That's one of the first questions that we ask all of our patients that want to improve their sexual function. The first thing you have to know is the definition of erectile dysfunction, a lot of people confuse with other terminology, such as curvature of the penis, low sex drive, premature ejaculation. While all those may play a part of erectile dysfunction, it's the actual definition is the repeated, the repeated inability to have sexual performance that gratifies both, the, uh, both partners of the couple. And I say repeated is because everybody has a down moment, so to speak, now and then. They're stressed from an exam or stressed from work, and they can't maintain sufficient erectile function. But this is the repeated inability, and it's usually done, it usually happens as a man gets older, uh, sometimes associated with medical conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and other medical conditions. So, how does erection start? Well, there are two basic um, uh, principles. You have to have adequate blood flow that goes into the penis, and you also have to have occlusion in the vein so it does not let that blood flow get out. Any kind of malfunction between the blood flow going into the penis or too much blood leaving the penis in the veins can lead to erectile dysfunction or a inability to maintain an erection. Some causes of ED include obesity, smoking, drinking, sleep apnea, and some, some simple remedies can fix a lot of these things to improve erections. For example, smoking constricts the blood vessels in the penis. Just stopping smoking can improve erections within 12 to 24 month period without taking anything else. In a similar manner, obesity can decrease testosterone, a necessary ingredient for good erectile function and sex libido. And just losing weight, exercising, eating right foods can lower the obesity so you'd have a greater amount of testosterone in your circulating system. Some people have been concerned that testosterone supplementation can lead to stroke or heart attack. And the data actually shows that there's no strong correlation between those occurrences and testosterone. However, it may suppress your fertility. So for young men who want to take testosterone supplementation, please discuss that with your clinician or your healthcare provider to make sure that this doesn't have any of those side effects in your system. Another question is, is erectile dysfunction a barometer for health? We know that if the blood vessels of the penis are diseased and not getting adequate blood flow, could that also suggest that blood vessels in other parts of the body, such as your heart and your brain, are not getting enough blood flow? And that's why, depending upon other medical comorbidities in the patient, we will actually refer them to a cardiologist to make sure that, in addition to treating their erectile dysfunction, we're making sure that no other disease processes are going on. When a typical patient comes into our office, we assess if they are low risk for medication, intermediate risk for medication, or high risk for medication. And depending upon which category they fall into will determine how the treatment is done and if you see the cardiologist sooner rather than later. Before we get into the medications that you're familiar with, let's talk about other treatments because not all patients can take uh, medicines because they have cardiac issues and they're on nitroglycerin. One of these is called the vacuum pump, which is a plastic tube that goes over the shaft of the penis and causes, forces blood by a vacuum into the blood vessels of the penis, and then by putting a occlusive ring at the base will allow uh, a penis to stay erect for several minutes to have sufficient penetration. This has worked very, very well with a lot of our patients. When that doesn't work, another possibility is using uh, in, uh, intraurethral suppository, which is absorbed through the penis, gets absorbed in the blood vessels in the penis, and this could also lead to a satisfactory erection that's sufficient for penetration. And these treatments can be used for patients who cannot take the pills because, of they, ha because they have heart issues. Another medication are injections of what's called Trimix, which is a combination of several medications directly into the blood vessels of the penis. And some patients who are very comfortable with handling a needle, such as diabetics, who give themselves insulin has found this very appealing because it's a simple one-shot injection 
will cause an erection for several minutes or even a half an hour, which is sufficient for adequate penetration. And if patients don't like to inject themselves or put a suppository in the urethra, there's always the surgical treatments of using an inflatable penile prosthesis or a semi-rigid prosthesis, which gives the patient the sensation and the ability to penetrate. It will not necessarily increase uh, orgasm or increase sensation, but it's a purely mechanical device that allows uh, adequate penetration for satisfaction of uh, both partners of the couple. Some patients are curious about the surgical procedures that we can do for erectile dysfunction. This is an example of an inflatable penile prosthesis. You have two tubes that go into the shaft of the penis that fill up with water. And they get that water from the reservoir, which is placed inside the body next to the bladder. And this pump stays in the scrotum, which controls the inflation and deflation. So when you're ready to inflate, you squeeze the bottom of the pump and water is transferred. That makes the corporal bodies get rigid. And then when you're finished with the act, you squeeze another part of the pump and that makes it go soft again. Another device, if patients cannot handle the inflatable penile prosthesis, is called the semi-rigid prosthesis. And this is much more like a gooseneck lamp. So this goes inside the tubes of the penis, but when you're not using it, it's bent down, and nobody knows that you have this, so you wear it in your penis, under the underwear or clothes, and then when you're ready to have an erection, you just bend it up, and it stays rigid. And again, both this and the semi-rigid will, will not make your penis any bigger, or uh, increase your sex drive or increase sensation. It's purely mechanical to maintain sufficient erection for penetration. Now, many of you have heard the medications such as Viagra and Cialis and Levitra. And what these do are they're smooth muscle vasodilators. And that means it allows blood to go into the blood vessels of the penis to allow for sufficient erection that is good enough for penetration. Anytime you use any kind of medication, whether it's an oral pill or injectable agent or even a vacuum pump, you must talk with your primary health care provider to know the risks and benefits of each of these devices and medications. That's extremely important. When I have a patient comes to my office and the medication isn't working, I look at other factors. Are they still smoking? Are they still drinking? Is their diabetes out of control? Are there other factors going on that could affect the blood flow in the penis? These are all things that can affect the efficiency of the medication. So before I say the medication's not good, I try to control other factors. And then if it doesn't work, I can go on to other medications or other treatments to make the patient satisfied. And sometimes uh, one treatment, such as pills, may have a suboptimal or less than optimal benefit. And another treatment also may be suboptimal, but when I put them together in such as a combination therapy, it's, the patient gets great satisfaction because both of them together are better than either one alone. But you, as the patient, also has a role. You can eat a better diet. You can stop smoking. Better control of your blood pressure and your diabetes. You can lose weight and exercise. All these corrections in behavior modification can help the medications and other treatments work more effectively. So when a patient comes to our office, the first role is I look at, simply put, what medications can I offer the patient and what things can they do to help the medication work better, such as cutting down on smoking, drinking, any kind of drugs, exercise, eating a better diet. When that doesn't work, then we go to stage two, which is injection therapy, vacuum pump therapy, or using suppositories in the urethra. And lastly, when that doesn't work, then we talk about surgery, both the inflatable penile prosthesis and the semi-rigid prosthesis. And it benefits to go to your uh, practitioner and feel these and uh, play with these devices to see what is best for you and your partner. One last thing I'd like to impart is the famous comedian Woody Allen had said, the brain is the sexist organ of the body. Viagra, Cialis, Levitra won't save your marriage or make you a better husband or father, but used in conjunction with good communication in a good, resp responsible way with your partner can lead to a better sexual outcome. So in summary, seek out your options with your healthcare provider. Have realistic expectations, but there is treatment out there and we're here to help. Thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you.